Um, so Catherine Lippe has developed 17 microsatellites specifically for this species. To date, um, 14 of the loci have been amplified in 389 individuals, and we perform basic analyses such as hardy weinberg equilibrium, linkage disequilibrium, and summary statistics just to make sure these loci are behaving as they should. I'm not going to present it, but they appear to be behaving like they should for the study. Then the program structure is used to um, determine the number of populations and the genotypic assignments. And how this works is um, it assigns each individual um, to a population by minimizing leakage, disequilibrium, and maximizing how you want to be able without um, even knowing the location that they were in. Then we use the MSA analyzer to calculate FST values. So to answer the first question, how many populations are there here in Hawaii? Um, these are plots given by structure. So they range from one population, or models ranging from one population to three populations. How they work is on the x-axis is you have each bar, like each bar is one individual. And then on the y-axis is Q values. So the Q values are pretty much the probability that that individual is going to stay in that population. So when we make the program say, oh, you need three pop or um, let's assume three populations, you can see here in white, all the individuals have pretty much the same probability, probability that they're going to sort into each population. So that pretty much indicates that there's no structure or there's just one population here in Hawaii. We've also done pairwise FST, FST tests. So FST values work, um, they range from 0 to 1, 0 being the most connected, so the most gene flow occurring between geographic areas, and 1 being the least connected, where there's a little bit of gene flow. And what we've found is here in Hawaii, there's no significant values. So they're all really small. And then the, the FST values are really small. So there's no, or there's a lot of gene flow going through Hawaii, and it's pretty much in pandemics. So no structure. Um, but we've also expanded our study to include the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, thanks to some collaborators in Australia who've given us lots of samples. So how many, pop or our second question was, how many populations are there worldwide? How many are genetically? significant or genetically different. And using structure, it indicates that the model with four populations fit the data best. So here's the key values where you can see structure. So you get all these columns vertical instead of horizontal. Um, the regions that are, are the, the four populations comprise the Pacific, the Indian, Panama, and Hawaii. And I'd like to point out that the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean have some admixture, so there's some gene flow going through those two populations. Um, when we do pairwise FST values, we find that Hawaii uh, has the highest FST values, so point, ranging from 0.101 to 0.183. Panama's in a close second with values from 0.066 to 0.183. And um, relative to Hawaii and Panama, the Pacific and Indian Ocean top, or FST values are fairly low. And we can kind of estimate, or hypothesize that these are going to be, the populations in Hawaii and Panama are going to be really different because there's these vast amounts of water for, larvae, for the larvae to tra traverse, and there's not going to be too much mixture. Um, so conclusions, so the main one is Hawaii is the most isolated island chain in the world. Panama ranks second, and the West Indian and the Indo-Pacific cluster into two populations. However, uh, the mixed Q assignments and the relatively low FST values um, suggest weak structure. Um, the take home message is because we are the most isolated island group in the world, and we need to, uh, that we need to protect and properly manage our region <coughs> for land management and overfishing. There are no outside sources to restock our reefs, so protect what we have so our cake can enjoy in the future. Um, future work are finished genotyping and scoring the rest of the samples at all loci. Collect more samples and genotype samples from the Big Island, Maui, and Kauai to make sure white populations are indeed in Panamixia. And I'd like to collect samples from the northwestern Hawaiian Islands just to see if there might be structure to that. Uh, special thanks to all our laddies and Dave Carlin and Catherine Lippi. Without them, this project wouldn't be as far. And I'd really like to thank Catherine because she's been tremendous in teaching me all this stuff. Um, all the fishermen who've helped out um, giving us samples, they've been really supportive about our project, and I can't thank them enough. The folks down under, Howard Coe and Nick Van Herwigen, for all their hundreds of samples they sent from Australia and from the Indian Pacific Ocean. Ross Robertson from Australia, who sent us samples from Panama. 
Um, Noreen Young and Ming Long, Katie Howard, and Matt Ross for helping sample on the long. Uh, Hawaii Coral Reef Initiative for all their funding. Sea Grant Program at BC. And thank you very much. Any questions?